Turgot had argued for a simplified coronation in Paris. This would have given the impression of a king crowned by popular acclamation, with the double effect of bringing extra commerce to the capital. Perhaps it was the May riots that persuaded the king and his advisers to go for the security of Reims, so much further from the capital. At all events, this excursion of the king and queen exposing themselves to the public gaze a long way from Versailles and in the direction of the northeastern border, at a time when the physical appearance of royalties was generally speaking an unknown factor, was to have unforeseen consequences in years to come. The day of the coronation, 11th June, was intensely hot and the long ceremony was exhausting. Nevertheless, Marie Antoinette was deeply moved by the occasion. First of all, her husband's dignified concentration caused her to weep as the Te Deum was being sung. The king too had tears in his eyes, but the queen's emotion was so overwhelming that she was forced to withdraw for a short while. On her return, the eyes of the royal couple met tenderly. All of this was noted and received much approbation. The people loved her for her tears. Second, as Marie Antoinette told her mother afterwards, she was affected by the most touching acclamations on the part of the people and the evident devotion shown to them both. This despite a shortage of bread, which continued. In the evening, both the king and queen promenaded outdoors informally through the city, stoically enduring the stifling heat, Marie Antoinette on the arm of her husband. Now, if at all, during the period of the Flower War was the occasion where Marie Antoinette might have uttered the notorious phrase Let them eat cake. Instead, she indulged to her mother in a piece of reflection on the duties of royalty. Its tenor was the exact opposite of that phrase, at once callous and ignorant, so often ascribed to her. It is quite certain, she wrote, that in seeing the people who treat us so well despite their own misfortune, we are more obliged than ever to work hard for their happiness. The king seems to understand this truth. As for myself, I know that in my whole life, even if I live for a hundred years, I shall never forget the day of the coronation. This was a tender heart. Yet, alone among the French royal family, refused to ruin the peasants' cornfields by riding over them, because she was well aware of the minutiae of the lives of the poor. In fact, that lethal phrase had been known for at least a century previously, when it was ascribed to the Spanish princess Marie Therese, bride of Louis XIV, in a slightly different form. If there was no bread, let the people eat the crust, it was known to Rousseau in 1737. It was credited to one of the royal aunts, Madame Sophie, in 1751, when reacting to the news that her brother, the Dauphin Louis Ferdinand, had been pestered with bread. Visit to the Comtesse de Boine, who, as a child, at the Versailles of Marie Antoinette, attributed the same to another aunt, Madame Victoire. But the most convincing proof of Marie Antoinette's innocence came from the memoirs of the Comte de Provence, published in 1823. No gallant guardian of his sister-in-law's reputation, he remarked that eating pâté en croûte always reminded him of the saying of his own ancestress, Queen Marie Therese. It was, in short, a royal chestnut. <laughs> 